or they would produce, you know, one unit produce based on your recipe. Uh huh. Uh, I have, I have, I don't have necessarily your answer, but. I had a story that happened to me about exactly what you're talking about, and I want everybody to hear that. Okay. Um, 20 years ago, I wanted to pr produce this mustard, and on a large, um, you know, scale. Mm -hmm. I did my, I worked on the business for seven months, and I invested about seven thousand dollars, and I got a co-packer in Gilroy. I won't mention any name, but. Um, Anyway, my entire uh, production of uh, 10,000 jars went sour. Mm -hmm. And the reason why is because my product cannot be produced on a large quantity. Mm -hmm. And it should have gone into a lab and it should have been kind of, you know, increased um, slowly to see how it was responding mm -hmm. to the packing. And that was not done. So they basically took your recipe and, and took it to the yeah. yeah. So, so that's part of the vetting process, and, and a good co-packer goes through a kind of a sequence with you. Generally, you bring your recipe and your product to them, and you spend some time on site. They should have a, a resident or at least a consultant a food scientist who works with them. And they measure all sorts of things, flavor profile, pH, uh, in, in addition to just looking at your recipe. And one of the things that it, with sauces that they look at is viscosity. And they'll take a sauce and dump it out onto a viscosity meter and it goes down so far and then that measures the desired viscosity. They have to often take your recipe and, and tweak it a bit to make it okay for large production. Um, and then you go through the process of tasting it, you know, verifying that it's going to work for you, and then they go into production. You should always go with the minimum amounts of production for your first few runs to avoid the kind of problems that you're talking about. And make sure that they stand behind it, that, that they'll give you your money back if they screw it up. I mean, it makes sense, right? Yeah. The, the other thing that you want to do with them is make sure that in play that they have in place what's called a HACCP program. HACCP, um, and that's that's for manufacturing. It's it's also used in restaurants, but more so in manufacturing. And that's that's a food safety program which follows all the steps of manufacturing, um, makes all the appropriate measurements, logs it all, um, so that you don't have any issues with it. And when you buy product, um, you should also ask your vendors for their HACCP program. Okay? So, <clears throat> co-packers can be a great thing. They make your product. It's all done in a licensed facility. You're done with that whole part of it. Now you're a salesperson. Yeah? At, at what point does this cease being a, an artisan product? <laughs> When you step into the mass production, yeah, I guess when you it, truly, I mean, I don't know why the product would not have. The question was, when does it quit becoming an artisan product? Um, I guess when you're on in the shelf of half the grocery stores in the country, it's no longer an artisan product. And uh, and again, as I preface this, it's not for everybody. You know, you may want to go to the point that you're producing out of a facility and you're making 5,000 units a month and or 1,000 units a month or whatever it is and that's as far as you want to take it. Mm -hmm. It's up to you. But the whole point of tonight was to take you from beginning to end in the stuff that you were going to encounter. Okay. Any questions other than uh, rhubarb marmalade? <laughs> Could you explain the last one up there again? I, I this is, um, HACCP stands for Hazard Analysis Critical Control Point. Um, and especially in, in, with, with what you're doing, you've also want to probably get what's called a GMP certification. This is good manufacturing practices. Um, and this is non, but both of these are non-government um, programs. HACCP was actually developed uh, when they created the food for the astronauts to make sure, make sure the food was safe. Can you imagine being in a spacesuit and having diarrhea? Oh my God, throwing up. Oh, oh horrible. You got this bubble on your head and everything's weightless. <laughs> 
<laughs> so that's where it came from. Uh, we use it in restaurants, especially restaurants that do um, that do commissary type operations, and it basically follows the flow of food, um, and it, it uh, documents all the what are called critical control points or places where it could become unsafe. Um, GMP is good manufacturing practices, and there's two. There's two of these. There's GMP and GAP. GAP is good agricultural practices, and this is an, these are international organizations. They're industry driven. Uh, good agricultural practices, um, for instance, have a guideline that you can't have livestock within 400 feet of. Uh, of leafy greens. And if you look back on all the E. coli outbreaks and hepatitis A outbreaks that we've had out of Salinas Valley, it was almost always because livestock were too close. And we have this oral fecal thing going on. So good agricultural practices, a very strong program in Mexico. Uh, most of the large producers in this area are involved in this. Good manufacturing is the same sort of guidelines. And these are overseen by the industry, by the restaurant industry or the food service industry. Um, so this is just another sort of validation that you can get for a process or a product that you're using. Okay? Did I answer your, I don't even know who asked it, but the, I got your HACCP question? Yeah. Okay. And you said to ask your vendors because they will have... They should have a HACCP program as well. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And that would have to do more with like a filling of recall or something? No, a HACCP is, is just a, a, how they keep their food safe, basically. Paperwork. It, yes, paperwork. It's paperwork. <laughs> it's only valid if you have a paper trail, right? So. But if you're, if you're selling things to a vendor that are sealed... No, I'm talking about the vendors you buy things from. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? Have we worn you out? Thank God. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you. Don't forget your quest your uh, evals, Sam. Huh? Don't forget your mustard. Oh yeah, I'll get it later. I couldn't tell what it was. <laughs> I like the color. Again, um, thank you to uh, some resources that are also in your uh, in the packets. Um, thank you and I know you talked a little bit about follow-up one-on-one -on -one counseling in your pre-venture business. We have some steps for you to go through before you sit down with an advisor. And again, thank you very much to our sponsors and Cabrillo College Extension for um, putting this on time. And Tom and Phil are still here. So if you have any follow-up questions, and I'd appreciate your evaluation. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.